We are now in the uh, last segment of our third unit that is experiential marketing strategies and tactics. So as the name suggests, we are, we are practicing this experiential marketing. So you are trying to relate some kind of, or you are trying to give some kind of experience to your customers. So what it is, what it is all about, let us see that. Experiential marketing is a valuable strategy that uses live experiences to forge authentic bonds between your brand and your consumer. So it's a, it's a great strategy, valuable strategy, which uses the live experience. And this thing is happening live. There is no recording as such. So everything is live uh, in experiential marketing. Now, why we are carrying out this uh, or why we are trying to give some kind of live experience to our customers so that you can forge a, bo uh, a bond between you and your consumers. You want to go more closer to your customers. Whatever is happening, whatever communication is taking place through advertisement, uh, uh, you know, uh, by making use of social media, it is only one way. It is only you who is uh, uh, giving away the message and people are receiving. But we don't come to know, are they receiving actually what we are trying to communicate? Do they want some kind of change? here or do they have any complaints which they want to communicate so two-way communication is not happening that is why this connection between you and your consumers is not a uh, good label something but then there is there lacks a kind of connection now in order to avoid this uh, basically when you want to connect with your customers. That is what we are learning in CRM. You are going one step ahead or you are going to the next level of getting connected to your consumers. And one such way of getting connected to your consumers is through experiential marketing. It gives marketers an entirely different way to capture audience attention and build customer loyalty. Exactly. When I'm trying to be live with my audience, with my consumers, whom I want to retain, whom are where I want to increase loyalty. Instead of telling them about your brand, you are asking them to be part of it. So through these uh, live experiences, you are trying to get connected with them on a real-time basis. So rather than uh, just telling, uh, rather than just communicating or having a one-way communication, you are participating them, you are letting them participate in the game, you are letting them participate in that in that activity and this way you are trying or you are asking them what more they want or what are what are their suggestions hmm? things like that. When it comes to expanding awareness and engagement to your business, nothing matches a well-crafted experiential marketing strategy. Yes, it invites an audience to interact with a business on a real world situation. Now, there are some other names also given to experiential marketing as engagement marketing or event marketing, participation marketing or live marketing. Now, same thing happens. We have heard event marketing. There are these event uh, managers who interact with the, uh, with the participants and through that interaction, they make the event um, successful, yeah, entertaining, enjoyable hmm? because there is participation. It's not like somebody is coming and performing and we are just watching. They, uh, these are uh, event marketers, they pick the volunteers from the mob and tell them to perform on something or you know, such things happen. So it becomes more interactive and interested, interesting as well. Now, when we want to practice this experiential marketing, these are some of the strategies. So through our service, through research, through AdWords, through broadcast, entertainment, game, interactive technology, education set. These are some of the ways we can practice interactive marketing. Service, jaise ki, uh, you know, uh, a person comes for the installation. So he gives you the live demo of how to use the product. So whatever uh, doubts you have while you are working on that product can be rectified by him. Similarly, um, if you have observed on these um, uh, these telemarketing channels. Uh, for example, a famous chef is giving the demonstration. They say Wonder Chef, for example. 
Sanjeev Kapoor is performing live in front of you during that particular time slot. Now it used to happen 12 to 1 ke beech mein, 12 to 12, 10 ke liye, he used to come live on that particular channel. No? At least as a live karke aata tha. And then he used to give how uh, demonstration for those wonderful uh, uh, wonder chef products, wonderful wonder chef products, how they are uh, doing and how it can save your time. So this is experiential marketing. This is sort of form of experiential marketing. Then uh, through your uh, uh, you know broadcast and uh, by way of television also those phone in programs are there. You know you have to call on that particular helpline members and then you can ask your queries. Though you won't get a hundred percent answer, but at least some uh, way or we can say ray of hope can be given through those phone in programs. No, you can ask the expert, the panel mates, the doctors, better with those panel of expert doctors. You can ask few questions and they try to resolve the issues uh, at the max by uh, trying their level best. So these are some sort of experiential strategies which we can implement to increase the customer loyalty. Even games are there. Games, um, for example, now. Um, in uh, corporates, if we have to take the example, you know, suppose annual function is there or, you know, some days the uh, organization decides to celebrate, just the Diwali festival. And now, uh, the motive of HR to conduct such uh, or, or to have such events is team building activities, where, you know, in teams you have to, the uh, Lego uh, set is being given and you have to maybe come out with something which prototype or Ajobi, whatever as per the rules and regulations of those competition you have to come uh, uh, perform and come up with something so these games and all they uh, they try to have this bonding uh, amongst the employees and whatever Ajobi workplace where whatever issues are there when you become friends with somebody such issues they get you know, minimized. So that is the intention of this experiential strategy. So these are some of the strategies which we just now have seen. Uh, moving on to the next unit. Wait a minute. I we are now starting with fourth unit. That is overview of CRM in, in the scenario, business to customer and business to business market scenario. Can you see the... You see these slides? No, ma'am. No, you cannot see. Wait a minute. Is it now? Yes. So how this CRM um, in business to business and business to customer scenario, how it is being implemented, how it works, that is what we are now going to see. So let us understand B2B and B2C CRM. B2B CRM is a single platform that brings customer data and campaign executives together. Now business to customer scenario, how CRM is, how it performs. Uh, it brings the data and the campaign executives together, enabling marketers to better understand the buyers and user data to directly power campaigns across channels. So uh, in this CRM, business to customer CRM, there is this data of the targeted customers, uh, the implementers and, and the campaign executives who are going to execute it, they sit together. They, they uh, take this information together so that the marketer can better understand the customers as in the buyers and they can use this data directly to make this campaign powerful and that can be run across channels. So basically the data is studied here and accordingly the changes are made. So marketers and the campaign executives, they also sit, they work on this data and it can be implemented. B2B CRM stands for business to business CRM and it refers to systems, technology, strategies and processes that help B2B companies manage their relationship with existing and potential customers. 
only difference in B2B and B2C is here uh, in B2C it is you and me who are going to be studied by the campaign executives. Whereas in case of B2B scenario, it is actually the another business whom you are going to serve. So you are understanding um, their systems, their strategies, their processes and accordingly in order to retain such clients, you are coming up with your own strategies and uh, way you are going to handle the relationship. Business to business companies sell their products and services to other businesses and organizations instead of an individuals, exactly. Like website services we have or insurance companies who are going to serve those insurance uh, policies of them to another. Jessica, uh, when, when a um, hospital is there or when an organization is there, now they want to opt for um, you know, group insurance for their employees. So they contact such insurance companies and for such insurance companies, it is the organizations or the corporates who are their customers. So who in turn will subscribe those policies to their employees. So this is what B2B scenario. B2C, where businesses sell directly to the end users like restaurants, hospital, hospitality businesses, etc. Now something we have to study is in, uh, in this B2B and B2B scenario is this service recovery. Now, what is this service recovery? Service recovery is company's resolution of problem from dissatisfied customer, converting them into loyal customer. So, I am in this process of, uh, I have understood, identified that you know, these set of customers are dissatisfied customers. Now, I cannot leave uh, these customers as it is otherwise that dissatisfaction will increase and definitely some of them i'm going to lose forever which i don't want to happen so i try to convince them i try to uh, solve their uh, queries i try to give them some kind of solutions now why i'm doing this so that uh, you know this level of dissatisfaction can be lowered can be minimized and chances probability is there that I can convert them into a loyal customer. So the efforts which I put in here is called as service recovery. I'm trying to recover or I'm trying to uh, lower this satisfaction, uh, lower this dissatisfaction towards the loyalty. This is the action a service provider takes in response to service failure. Service failure hone ke baad, whatever actions the service provider is taking in is called as service recovery. Suppose after installation, I find that a particular software is not working properly. It is still giving me some errors. So I troubleshoot. So this troubleshooting is nothing but a kind of service recovery. I'm, I'm again going back and I'm trying to understand where the problem lies, where I'm going wrong. Aim of service recovery is to convert a customer from being unhappy to being content. I'm trying to reduce the level of dissatisfaction and I'm trying to give uh, or I'm trying to increase the satisfaction by lowering the dissatisfaction. That is service recovery mechanism. So there are some basic steps. Customer service recovery follows. The process follows. So these steps are first apologize review, fix, and follow, and then document. These are some basic steps which we have to follow when we are doing the recovery job. First, apologize. Go beyond an apology and ask for forgiveness, a genuine one. That is like what we say, sorry or excuse me. So, so such words we use. So apology is basic step. So we are going beyond and asking for forgiving. So if you uh, have observed when you uh, um, call the call center and if you are a dissatisfied customer, usually it is, you know, uh, they have given this uh, flow chart where their sentence begins with sorry and excuse me. So the tone is like that. So they are apologizing when they hear to a, a you know, quite dissatisfied customer when they hear about. So 
the first step is apologizing then they review before solving the problem you should make a collaborative review of it with the help of the complaint so you are actually understanding before solving what the issue is so when i have to take the steps necessary steps first i should understand where i am going wrong so when we are analyzing this where i am going wrong meaning we are reviewing the problem after reviewing comes fix and follow up this is crucial step where the action really starts to take place now through review you found out where the problem exactly is so you try to fix that problem and then you try to uh, you know follow some steps to overcome that problem so that is the third step and then document document is you know making a note of it somewhere so that in future when when you come across such things or maybe your colleagues if they come across such things what steps they have to follow so that is documentation so these are some basic steps the customer service recovery uh, follows stages of service recovery maturity um it begins from here huh? bottom side mori and you and mori bit then comes proactive then comes active listening solicitation and infused these are some five steps of service recovery maturity goes through so how the process actually begins these are some of the steps let us study these steps one by one wait a minute as i said the first step is called as moribund m o r i b u n now this is uh, now in this step there is no complaint handling which takes place the angry customers are most of the times they are ignored uh, based on uh, uh, the field you are dealing with so angry customers are ignored uh, we don't pay attention or we don't try to solve their queries or we don't try to look into the issues which they are facing so most of the times uh, the customer the customer calls and uh, you know nobody attends it attends as in not the physical call but the complaint fine okay matlab we only assume that it is not of uh, you know great importance so it will happen or it will get corrected automatically so little bit of ignorant attitude is being shown and that is called as the first stage the service recovery the organization goes through the series of stages so this is how these stages are now when we are practicing this um, um, crm or when we are going to practice or making this crm system better trying to reduce the level of dissatisfaction and converting those dissatisfied customers into loyal customers we should understand where we are standing right now so that we can improve so these stages are actually telling us to analyze our own position in terms of giving away the services are you understanding if i am into service industry when i am giving away the services how my service recovery is how fast i react how quickly i resolve the issues so in order to grade myself i am at first stage or second stage or third stage fourth or fifth first i should understand those stages and that is what we are doing right now so this stage first is moribund stage where there is no complaint handling which is taking place the customers are simply ignored customer calls us and we don't take any action we say that yeah our customer care executive will get back to you shortly but nobody gets back to them shortly so if that that is the scenario of our services then we are at the first stage second is called as reactive second stage of the moribund that is called as reactive stage now kya hota hai is stage mein customer complaints are heard and response is made at least we are listening 
we are hearing to the complaints and we are making some response. But it's a haphazard process with no definite goals for the response. And no one is owning this business process. Jaise ki we say that, okay, thank you for calling us. Um, maybe our customer care executive will get back to you in next four working days. And so we are giving some kind of response from our side. We are hearing, we are responding. But today I say that uh, the customer care executive will give you a call back in four days time. Tomorrow, same complaint I receive. There is somebody else who is sitting in that chair. So he may give, he may give, or he may comment that within two working days, you will get a call. So it's a haphazard process. There are no set responses for such complaints. As and when somebody sits there, as per his, his or her own wish, they come up with the response. And there is no person who is owning this business process. Now, owning business process meaning the responsibility and accountability. So, maybe uh, we can say this happens in case of, you know, smaller, uh, small service providers or just with the local service providers for that matter, who are yet to streamline the processes. They have just started their business. Huh? This is just to give you the example. It's not that all service providers are like this. Those who are new into the business, they are all in the first stage or second stage. It's not necessary. But just to make the things clear, uh, we are discussing such examples. So when systems and procedures are not in place, there is no person who is accountable. Right? If you if you observe, usually on the cartons, they say biscuit, hai, bread, hai, you know, daily consumption, ke, these items are there. If you a line ki hoti, for any queries, for any complaints and queries, please contact. Or niche exam, ye number diya hai. So the manager or uh, the executive food and beverages, uska address, email ID, diya hua hai hai. So meaning that that person, abhi uska, they, have, they are not the uh, manufacturer or the marketer, is not disclosing the name of the person. But then we know in case of such difficulties, whom to contact. So they are giving away that designation. Huh? The manager, food and beverages division, we have food, product manager, uh, so and so division. So it means what? There is somebody who is owning that business process. But when we are in this second stage of service recovery maturity, uh, the stages when we are describing, this reacting stage where you are listening to your customers, but then there is no process, definite process which you are following. And there is no person also who is accountable to handle such complaints. Third stage comes is active listening. Active listening, at this stage, the response to issues uh, is structured and specific people have responsibility to respond to complaints and guidelines are in place for the response. So at least um, third step, may active listening, may uh, a particular complaint, how to handle, so that that is, that is being said. If customer calls and his complaint falls in first category. This should be the response. If this is of, you know, ki, we call it as severity, you know, intensity is ki hai, issue ki. based on that, the action plan is ready. If it is, you know, if the alarming kind of situation is there, then the actual person who is involved, you know, who is accountable, let's say the um, uh, security officer or cyber security specialist who is responsible for it. Maybe he gets a call huh? uh, on emergency basis you have to handle. So if it is weekend, you know, those on-call uh, guys are there who takes care of um, such issues. So point is that for each and every kind of complaint the there is the way to uh, you know tackle that issue. So number one is go for complaint type number two, this person should be con contacted. Severity one hai, isko call jayega. Two hai, three hai, like that. So specific people have responsibility here 
to respond to these complaints and the guidelines are also in place for the response how to how to uh, resolve such issues or what all points to checkpoints kya hone chahiye so such procedures are there and that is called as active listening so if you want to uh, or, or if uh, you as a business who are in this service recovery uh, phase for your customers to improve the loyalty and if you find yourself at stage 3 ki yeah we have systems in place we have people who are being assigned for a particular complaint then you can try to go for stage 4 if you are at stage 4 go to stage 5 like that so after stage 3 comes stage 4 that is solicitous now what is the solicitous stage proactive complaint solicitation meaning critical change from stage 3 to 4 is move from reactive to proactive solicitation of customers with issues now here we are reacting meaning when customer calls us then we try to resolve the issue ye tha third level fourth level in solicitation stage we are having this attitude of being proactive matlab problem hone ke pehle hi we are sensing and we are taking actions so that is called as proactive solicitation the reason is that most customers they don't bother to complain so unless and until there is an emergency then only people will come with complaints otherwise they don't so most of the times people you know they just keep a mum try to complain once only we are going to use who is going to come next time to the same hotel agar a uh, hospitality industry a restaurant chain of restaurants are there but maybe a simple restaurant you visited and you found that uh, whatever they committed or uh, the ambience and all the service customer service the overall food quality whatever they promised you know, over website whatever the use were there it is simply not delivering me the same it is completely chaotic one when i actually visited it some most of the times what do people do in such scenario they don't bother to complain while while giving away review ha agar billing ke time when i get a uh, pen and paper and i'm i'm being told to give my feedback what do i do i usually rate them on an average basis fine one or two kon dobara aane wala we are not going to come back here then why should we bother and why should we uh, you know give them a negative feedback so usually this is the mentality of customers that they don't bother to complain so we just move on to another service provider if not this restaurant we have got n number of options available but we'll never come back here we'll never come back to this particular restaurant yes we exactly do this so it's a lot of work to complain so solicitor's role is accompanied by encouraging customers to voice their complaints so complaints aane ke baad us pe react hone se acha hai that you try your customers you encourage your customers to voice their complaints but beginning mein hi when uh, you know after kya ho sakta hai i just discuss about this particular restaurant and i get the same feedback from few of my friends saying that yes yes this is even we experience so our level of dissatisfaction increases in such scenario which is not good from restaurants uh, restaurant owners point of view so what they are doing here is that they are encouraging their customers to voice their complaints but beginning may if you find that the customer is little irritated once he comes here he sees that the setting is inappropriate the lighting is inappropriate food is taking long to get served or to get cooked i my waiting time is more when the manager observes these things he goes and he tries to calm you down so that is called as the proactive way of handling the situation he is giving lesser time for the customers to react and that should be our approach and if that is our approach that is that means we are in this solicitation phase we are in the fourth step of service become so we are we are being more proactive here 
fifth that is called as infused. Now, this is achieved when the complaint identification merges with business process improvement. The owner of the business proposes and processes that the cause the customer issues, huh? the cause the uh, customers are facing problems, they are notified on uh, the occurrence to prompt re-examination of the process design. Meaning, as and when I opt for the services, I am being monitored by somebody and I am being given lesser chance to uh, you know, increase my level of dissatisfaction. Meaning that care is taken at all the points the customer comes, interacts and customer leaves. So same example of restaurant when I'm taking, as I enter and as I find that there is some kind of discrepancy which is not matching with what I was being promised. Somebody is making note of it and he is coming and he is proactively telling us. So uh, since there was no electricity since morning, we could not, uh, you know, do the regular cleaning or whatever it is. So that is why um, there is some, uh, some things are missing in today's overall appearance of our restaurant. So kindly bear with us for today only. Next time when you come, we'll ensure that you won't face such difficulties or problems. So you are going uh, with this approach that is called as the infused stage that is the last stage of the service recovery. I hope these stages are clear. So moribund, then reactive, active listening, solicitation and infused. So when we are trying to uh, come up with service recovery, this is how we have to analyze ourselves at what stage we are currently and then it becomes easy for us to modify to come up with a better version of our service recovery model. Now we are going to see how in um, service industry the CRM implementation takes place. So we are going to study banking, then we have hospitality, then uh, we have aviation, we have telecom and we have um, another uh, telecom and retail. So this is how the application of CRM now we are going to see in these industries. So industrial scenario, KSI, roughly we are going to um, see the, or, or we are going to observe how it is. So CRM in case of banking industry, what happens? CRM assists banks in sales management with its sales modules. So kya kya application hai CRM ke? In, in banking industry is uh, is being listed here. So it assists banks in sales management with its sales model, so sales module. Now, what they are going to sell here, the banking products. So what are banking products they have? They have got current account, they have simple or um, salary account, or let's say, uh, simple uh, savings account they have. Uh, maybe they have this PPF account. So various account types, uh, mutual funds are there. Banks are also selling uh, gold ETFs or banks uh, locker is there, which they have to sell. So such products, these are all the banking products. Uh, so managing this management, sales management of this comes in CRM. So how, how you are going, how the CRM is assisting the um, selling of these banking products with their sales modules. It helps you identify and convert leads into prospective customers. So through CRM, you can identify who your would-be customers, who your prospective customers are. So you, uh, you can identify them and you can also convert them with the help of CRM. Now, how I can identify my prospective customers? Suppose I visit a particular bank, the website. I'm talking about. I visit a website of a particular bank because I wanted to know few of the things. Ye bank ka interest rate kitna hai, ya fir ATM service kaise hai, ya fir branch wise how the uh, network is, ya fir something else. Who there? Uh, maybe the promoters, ya 
क्या क्या प्रोडक्ट है हाउ हाउ दे आर ऑन on this online thing online platform so this is what i wanted to check so i visited the banking a particular bank's website so through my visit um uh, it came to know that so and so person visited so i can be their prospecting customer so i get a call uh, from the executive saying that uh, are you interested in opting for सो एंड सो अकाउंट वी ऑफर और फिर जो भी बेनिफिट्स है चांसेस आर देर दैट आउट ऑफ टेन थाउजेंड सच कॉल्स विच आर बींग मेड टू दीज वेबसाइट विजिटर्स मे बी टेन परसेंट और वन परसेंट लेट से हंड्रेड कस्टमर्स दे अग्रीड एंड यू नो दे ओपन एन अकाउंट विथ मी सो इट्स अ गुड नंबर आई कैन डू दिस विद दी हेल्प ऑफ सी आर So it helps me identify and convert leads into prospective customers. CRM assists in acquisition of new customers through the use of past track records and value they brought to the bank. So past record of the customers can also be checked, and CRM helps me in acquiring such customers. Um. Uh, whenever we opt for loans hum jo bhi hum loan lete hain there is an um, ek ek cheez hoti hai jisko bolte hai civil records c i b i l so based on our civil score now this civil score takes into consideration how promptly you repaid did you miss on any of the uh, um, kya hote hain loan ke installments did you pay it on time so how was your how was your past history when you opted for loan so based on that uh, the organization gives the civil score so when the bank is next time when you opt for loan this information is being shared in central so if your score is good your civil score is good uh, you get a, a loan amount approval if you apply for a you know higher amount of loan as well if the score is good it gets approved matlab bahut probability hoti hai that it gets approved but if your civil score is poor jaise ki credit card ki history also it takes into consideration that you were a defaulter you did not pay it on time you took for every uh, you know for 10000 ka uh, suppose credit card ka bill which you were supposed to pay agar if i go for Uh, this is uh, EMIs. I convert this loan into EMI. You were supposed to pay for that ten thousand for EMI uh, credit card card bill in let's say six months time, but you took one and half years time to uh, repay those ten thousand. So your civil score is very poor. So when a bank official comes to know about your civil score, your loan probably will not get approved. So that is what. Uh, CRM comes into picture. So through CRM, uh, through these softwares, I come to know about the history, the past. That is what we are discussing: the past track record of the customers. And in this way, it helps me acquire the new customers. So, but such customer comes to me, I will not entertain him, saying that um, we'll get back to you. Yeah, fair. You know, we give some reasons, and we don't want such defaulters on our board. CRM also makes the efforts of marketing department more productive. Whatever uh, marketing efforts uh, the marketing department wishes to put in, CRM helps in formulating and giving them the appropriate guidelines. So this is roughly the process in banking system. <coughs> CRM process in banking industry. So there is this bank. the uh, the um, institution which is there now it is talking to market market which is a uh, market may there is this customer identification new existing customer so bank is in communication with such people they are trying to understand who the new ones are who the existing ones are and accordingly it is communicated so there is even these customers are approaching to the bank and bank is approaching to their existing as well as new customers so this is how the interaction is done now at bank's end they have implemented 
this CRM thing. Yeah, they have this software implemented. Now this CRM, how it is helping bank. So there is this um, circular track we can observe. So through this CRM, they can analyze the profile of the customers. They can classify and they, uh, the CRM also helps me out coming up with these services. Now this all um, is being grabbed by grabbed for product and sales strategy design. So the managers are working, uh, they are taking out this information of customer profiling, classification, and to come up with some product or sales related strategies. This is how they are using inputs from this CRM software implemented. So these strategies are being implemented and somebody is there some managers are there who take the follow-up of such activities. So sales managers are tracking how the uh, campaign, uh, the how effective the campaign is. So they grab this information and again, the same is being fed in the system. Same is being provided in the system. So this is how the CRM thing in banking works. Hmm? Roughly, this is how it works. CRM in case of hospitality industry, hospitality industry, uh, hotel industry, restaurants are there. So CRM is a useful management tool that can be used to exploit sales potential and, uh, and maximize the value of customers the hospital industry is having. So in hospitality industry with the help of CRM, basically we are exploiting the sales potential in Joby whatever things we have to sell. Maybe the tickets are there. Yeah, fair, we have got packages. Huh? Just like make my trip here. So they have got this package, tours. So these are my products here. Or I have air tickets to sell. I have international air tickets. I have domestic uh, air tickets plus stay. Yeah, fair, only stay. Yeah, fair, only air tickets. Uh, group bookings are there. So these are some various offerings I have as a, you know, as a, as a partner, make my trip. And when I have to implement CRM, this is how it is helping me to understand the sales potential and uh, sales potential which I can exploit, I can make use of. And also it helps me to maximize the value of the customer to that hospitality industry. So I understand, I rate my customers and accordingly I try to maximize it also. Some are on newly, uh, they have become my customers. So I come up with some lucrative offers with the help of CRM, which can be offered and I can increase the loyalty of my customers. Uh, hospitality industry can use this asset and, in, uh, and turn it into key competitive advantage by retaining those customers who represent the highest lifetime value and profitability. Lifetime value, customer, when he opts for me and when he leaves me. So this time duration is called as customer's lifetime value. So with the help of CRM, I can understand such customers. Jinki highest lifetime value hai. dino tak, they are preferring me. For them, it is only me who is the service provider. In the lifetime values are I can identify such customers with the help of CRM and I can retain them. I can make the, make the offers as lucrative as to them so that they stay with me for a, for, for a longer period of time. And in this way, I can increase my competitive advantage. So more number of customers associated with or make my trip than yatra, ya fir than travel guru. So I become the number one service provider and this way I can attract and retain more such customers. So that is why, uh, or that is how the CRM in hospitality industry works. Kya kya hota hai? Now, what are, what are the things that are being included? Receiving periodic automated text, uh, text messages from hotel staff. So you get periodical automated text messages once you stayed with that particular uh, industry, a particular hotel. 
periodical uh, text messages may include wishing you on your birthdays or anniversary uh, or maybe let's say some special season is coming jaise ki diwali is there vacation seasons when they are coming christmas vacations summer vacations so greeting you in advance uh, motivating you to uh, visit the other properties of the same hotel at other places as well so such messages sending checking it uh, checking in on comfort uh, how you how did you like it did you face any problems how comfortable were the services asking if anything is needed and relay relying uh, in important information like breakfast time cocktail hours so basically uh you no know, surrounding you with these messages surrounding you with uh, such activities meaning you are trying to engage your customers to yourself you are trying to stick that customer to yourself and that is is that is what part of crm is so this is these are all activities you do through crm a properly used crm system can streamline guest services help um, successfully deliver the experiences as a crm if implemented properly if um, if it works properly it can streamline these services uh, meaning to um, so somebody books a particular suite or somebody books a particular slot and the same is being allotted to someone else this may happen in case of online bookings but this can be avoided with the help of crm system that is what it says that you can streamline this guest services also crm helps successfully deliver the experience because we are taking care of customer preferences of uh, his requirements and there is a software which is being uh, which is being uh, you know uh, which has been doing uh, such things so there is little room for uh, errors that is why it can help in delivering the experience the successful experience plus crm can have uh, can come up or give us the plethora of data uh, it provides Uh, which is prime for creating detailed reports that reveal the deeper trends so with the help of crm you get plethora of data plethora as in bahut sare angles a lot of data is available or is being made available with the help of crm system it captures minute of the details so you can understand your customer requirements in a deeper way and can come up with solutions so how this hospitality industry is using these crm let us study that uh, is is are the things clear so this is this is quite general this is what we have to understand we you know by just observing also we come to know how it is so how this hospitality uh, industry is using crm um there is this good example which uh, i have to tell you so i'm just uh, sharing with you something you know uh, the other other document which is there so let me just tell whether you can see that or not can you see this how hospitality is using crm hello can you see uh, this website which is which i am trying to show you here because it has got some percentages and you no know, statistical data can you see that All yes, yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Fine. So, a better hotel is at its I'm just reading few few of of the the points, a few of the important points from here. Um, a better hotel is at understanding its guest. The more likely the guest will return or offer a good review. It's no brainer that the hospitality uh, companies are using their CRMs mainly for improving customer experience. So 
how why they are using crm why uh, hospitality industry makes use of crm is basically to improve the experience which they uh, the customer uh, improve the customer experience now this experience starts from the very first touch point and that touch point is uh, in, in this case of hospi hospitality industry it is the online booking because from there the process begins but with 88% of hotel guests preferring an online booking experience human element is no longer part of that first touch though we are going to stay there but then 88% of the people they are booking it over online so no one is personally going looking at the property and then making the bookings and all this is not happening right now. so important touch point for our customers uh, for this hospitality industry is this online booking experience is something which is uh, which should be given due consideration due importance because as i said 88% of the hotel bookings are being done over online crm creates those personalized experiences through segmented targeted campaigns for examples um uh, data shows that pre arrival campaigns run through crm has 57% open rate 15.5 click through rate uh, when those emails are segmented the open rate is uh, 20% and click through rates is rising a staggering 70% meaning that um through crm you can create this personalized experiences which is a segmented or a tag which has got the segmented and targeted approach so the advertisement shown for um, for you uh, who uh, who came or who visited a particular hotel um, through their um, you know because you wanted to attend a corporate seminar or you know corporate uh, event was there that's why you visited that particular hotel so the communication which will be sent to you would be different a person who came with the family with his family for him the communication would be different so that is what is possible with the help of crm it creates these personalized experiences through these segmented or targeted campaigns apart from these targeted campaigns hotels are also doing social media in conjunction with their crms to engage communicate and gather crucial customer feedback meaning uh, with the help of crm you are understanding your customers better you are trying to understand your customers from all the angles and that is why uh, these are various ways you are getting connected to your customers so through crm with the help of crm the hotel industry or hospitality industry is also making use of social media so that they can engage communicate and can gather the crucial customer feedback and come up with some improved or better services so this is how roughly speaking the crm implementation or crm usage in case of hospitality industry moving on further coming back to our slide crm in case of aviation industry how crm can be implemented in case of aviation industry uh, crm solution helps you find new customers win their businesses keep them happy by organizing customer and prospect information in such a way that helps you build stronger relationships with them and grow your business faster again we are trying to connect and we are trying to gather more information with the help of crm implementation so that we can keep our customers happy the prospect prospective customers happy and can build the long term relationship so this crm in case of aviation industry have uh, in this way uh, we have learned the types of crm operational analytical and collaborative so in this way these three types of crms which are being used or implemented in case of airline industry so in case of operational automation of basic business processes so you are trying to automate the basic business processes in case of uh, uh, the airline crm uh, this is how it works like you have marketing all sales or services 
you are in uh, these um, hospitality industry, they try to automate. So we are uh, making it better because we are going for automation. So there is little room for errors. When you have automated sales response, once you uh, arrive at that particular, uh, you know, once you arrive for catching the flight or um, maybe 45 minutes ahead of your, you know, um, the scheduled arrival, you get a you get an SMS. Once you book the ticket, you get an SMS. Maybe 24 hours before your journey, you get an SMS. So this is kind of automation. So that is being covered under operational CRM. Then comes analytical analysis of customer data and behavior using business intelligence. So you are trying to analyze the data. You are, you are playing with the data and you are trying to understand the behavior of the consumers, behavior of your customers with the help of business intelligence, collaborative, communicating with clients. So who uh, clients could be here for airline industry, maybe the, the routes where you are not operating, but maybe you have a tie up or maybe you have collaborated with somebody or uh, there are uh, clients like make my trip or you know, yatra.com who are also doing uh, ticketing for you or other uh, private partners are there. So communicating with them is kind of collaborative CRM. So this is how the implementation of CRM is taking place in case of uh, airline industry. So these are various touch points, simple. Eh? Now these touch points meaning these are all the areas uh, airline industry is gathering information regarding serving their customers. So in case of reservations, when you check in and you check out frequent flyer program, FFPs are there, uh, business class services, uh, flight attendance, food and beverages, baggage tracking, etc. So you try to improve, you try to gather information, you try to understand your customers, taking into consideration all these touch points. And these are some um, expectations from the frequent travelers. This is what they are expecting an airline to have. So recognizing and rewarding my value. If I'm a frequent person who is opting for your services, then you should recognize me and you should reward because I'm frequently preferring you. Using the information you have about me or treating me as an individual, treating me consistently, solving my problems first, giving me the priority. So these are some uh, expectations from the travelers. CRM, uh, um, uh, the, uh, the CRM which is implemented at airlines uh, by these um, service providers, they should understand or they should take such things also into consideration about their travelers so that, you know, if you handle them uh, uh, by uh, treating their uh, the concerns, these concerns which we just now have discussed, you can take them to the next level of loyalty. So we are stopping for our sessions today here. We'll continue with the with the CRM implementation in uh, you know various such industries in tomorrow's lecture. So any doubts you have, let me know. Uh, so bye bye and have a great and nice day today. All right. So see you tomorrow.